So far, we've seen that a current carrying conductor that is placed into a magnetic field will experience a, a force due to the interaction of the magnetic field around that current carrying conductor and the external magnetic field. Now, the same is true with a coil. When we wrap that conductor around on itself many times, forming a coil, and we pass a current through it, putting it into an external magnetic field between two poles of a magnet, for example, then that coil will experience a force. And if we set it up correctly, we can make the coil turn around. And that's the basis of a DC motor. Now, in order to make this coil turn around and keep turning, we need to use a little device called a split ring commutator. And here it is. And we'll look at that in just a moment to see how it keeps the coil turning in the same direction. But first of all, let's take a look at Fleming's left hand rule to work out which direction this coil will rotate in this particular example. So a quick recap on Fleming's left hand rule. So if you hold out your left hand and point your fingers so that they're all at right angles to each other. So there's a right angle there, there's a right angle there, and there's a right angle between your thumb and your second finger. Start with the first finger, that's your first finger field. That's where we should always start, triple F, first finger field. And then rotate your hand, keeping your fingers and thumb pointing in the same directions so that your second finger is in the direction of the current flowing in the conductor. So second finger is the current. Your thumb will then tell you the force that's experienced by the current carrying conductor in that magnetic field. And that's the force that's called the motor effect force. Let's use this idea to see which way this coil should be turning. First of all, let's take a look at the cell. Now, just down here, we can see that the positive terminal of the cell is on the right. That's the larger line, the taller line, which means that conventional current must be flowing in this direction. So we follow it around and it goes into this brush, which connects with the split ring commutator, one half of the split ring commutator, and current flows into the split ring commutator and into the coil flowing away from us. So we have current flowing in that direction, away from us into the coil. Let's use Fleming's left hand rule now to work out which direction the coil is going to turn in. Use the first finger field, we see that the the magnetic field is going from north to south, so that is from left to right. That's the direction in which to point your first finger. Now, a bit of a contortion coming up now because you've got to rotate your hand so that the current, that's your second finger, is moving away from us into the page. And if you do that, you should find that we have a force downwards on this coil. So that coil is going to be forced in the clockwise direction. We can do the same thing on the other side of the coil, but of course the current is going to be traveling in the other direction towards us. Remember that the magnetic field stays the same from left to right. And using Fleming's left hand rule, we'll see there that the force or your thumb will be pointing upwards. So this coil is rotating in the clockwise direction. Okay, let's move on to the split ring commutator and see how that keeps the coil turning in that clockwise direction. So the, what happens here is that the split ring commutator disconnects the current every 180 degrees and reverses the current into the coil. And that keeps the coil turning in the right way. And what we're going to do is look at this situation 
uh, by looking head on as if you were looking at the split ring commutator and the coil from this arrow direction and we should see something like that. So hopefully that makes some sense looking at this situation head on. So a few words just before we start. The split ring commutator. Split ring commutator reverses the direction of the current every 180 degrees to keep the force on the coil turning it in the same direction in the same direction this is a DC supply so current continues to flow in one way from the cell or battery but this commutator this split ring commutator will effectively reverse the current in the coil every 180 degrees. So here's the first situation. Number one, this is looking at this setup from head on, from this way. Here's the split ring commutator. And these are the brushes, positive and negative. At the moment, current is flowing into the split ring commutator and into the coil going away from us, as we can see from the first instance here. And so we can write that as a, an arrow going away from us, that's going into the page, that's the current direction. It's as if you're shooting an arrow into the page, you can see the feathers of the arrow. Now current goes around the coil, comes back again and back to the split ring commutator and that means it's coming back towards us. So we can, we can uh, denote that with a little arrow head, a point coming out of the page towards us. Using Fleming's left hand rule now, and the magnetic field is going from left to right. And so first finger field, second finger is, the, our middle finger is pointing out of the page we see that the force on this is upwards, as we had originally here. The force on the lower part of the coil is downwards, and you can check that using Fleming's left-hand rule again. So let's continue the journey of this coil as it continues in its clockwise rotation. Now it's just reached the top, the vertical position, and see how the brushes of the, of the supply have been cut off from the coil. They're no longer in contact. There's a little gap in the split ring commutator. So there's no current flowing here. No current flowing in the coil. But momentum of the coil keeps it turning in the clockwise direction. So it's momentum will keep it turning. Momentum keeps the coil rotating. Okay. So it goes past the vertical to just past the vertical. And now the split ring commutator has come in contact with the brushes again. So let's look at what direction the current is now flowing. So we go from positive into the split ring commutator and into the coil. So here the current is flowing away from us again. And down here the current will be flowing towards us back to the split ring commutator. Now see how the current directions changed. From this position here it was flowing towards us. Past the vertical it's now flowing away from us. Use Fleming's left hand rule again in this situation here and we'll see that the force on this coil is now acting downwards 
and the force on this section of the coil at the bottom is acting upwards and that means that we keep the coil rotating in its clockwise direction. This happens every 180 degrees and it's the basis of the DC motor. So just down here we'll just write the current direction is reversed and coil continues to rotate in the clockwise direction in the clockwise direction great so that's using Fleming's left hand rule applied to a DC motor showing how the coil continues to be forced, in this case, in a clockwise motion by switching the current round every 180 degrees with the split ring commutator.